Hey, grown-ups, how are you doing today? I hope you're doing well, and I hope you're enjoying these story time extensions and that they've given you some fun ideas so far. If you haven't watched one before, my name is Miss Lisa, and I get to do the story times at Worthington Park, and we have a special story time that's called our Explore More, where we do some centers after we do our story time. And we thought maybe you could use some new ideas of things to do at home with your little one. So our story time theme this week was sick or staying healthy, depending on how you want to flip that. So we're going to talk about some ideas related to health for our centers. Are you ready? Okay. All right. Um, this is geared toward the grown-ups, but this is just how I talk to people. So, <laughs> so sorry. All right. Our first idea that I had is um, making x-ray art. So to do this, you would want to show your child some examples of x-rays. Be cautious when you search. Try to do healthy x-rays and things like that because sometimes you get some images that maybe are not super child appropriate. So um, we found that doing x-rays of arms are pretty fun and then you can make a beautiful piece of artwork like this where you take a piece of black paper, trace your child's hand and arm with um, chalk or if you have white crayons, you can use that. I used a white crayon here. And then you can add all the bones, the skeleton, with um, cotton swabs, no, Q-tips? I can't remember what they're called for sure. Um, but you use these and I cut some up to make smaller ones for the fingers so that we could show all the little joints and all the spots where the bones end. Um, so you can show them an example of a real arm x-ray and then try to make one uh, because even when we're trying to stay healthy things still happen and when sometimes we end up at the hospital or needing a cast or something like that and it's always good to have some idea that like we have bones inside of us and our bones help hold us up and you could talk a little bit about skeletons and how those parts of our bodies work so it's a fun idea. You do have to use regular glue. Glue sticks do not cut it. So um, if you have a friend who likes to play with glue, maybe you do the glue part and they add all the pieces. But this one's a really good one for our fine motor skills, like always, because we're working on the pincer grip for that. And it's a really good science activity because they're learning about skeletons and how all of that works. All right, the next idea I had is that you can make sure that you are including doing some form of exercise every day this week. So you can do yoga videos through, like my kids love Cosmic Kids on YouTube. Uh, they're very kid-friendly yoga story times. A huge range in the length too. So if you have a younger one that maybe is not super into yoga yet, she has tiny little ones. Um, that are really short and geared toward younger kids. And if you have an older kid, she has ones that are like 45 minute Harry Potter ones. So it's a nice range. Um, and if you don't feel like doing yoga or you've already done yoga this week, you could go for a bike ride. You can go outside and get some exercise that way. You can have a dance party. Just trying to aim for exercise every day is a great chance for you to talk to your kid about why that's important, why it's important for our health for us to exercise every day, why it's important for us mentally to exercise every day. Um, so you can hit on that a little bit with your child as well. The next thing I thought is that we could play pediatrician at home. So if you have any baby dolls, you can use your baby dolls. If you don't, they can use you. Or you can also play vet office and play with any of the stuffed animals that you have. But we love to get out our doctor's kits. If you don't have a doctor's kit, you can improvise. There are lots of fun things that you can do anyway, even without a doctor's kit to play. Um, but letting them play doctor helps for the next time they have to go to the doctor because they can do things like giving their baby a shot if the baby might need a shot. Or they can practice with... Um, writing on a clipboard and taking notes because they'll see well doctors most of the time now have like laptops and stuff but they can practice writing on a clipboard um, keeping track of what's going on with the baby and uh, they can also do things like checking the baby's temperature and um, just a lot of like basic things that would happen at a checkup they can weigh the baby they can see how long the baby is 
with like Duplos or something like that. Uh, but they can do all the things that you would normally have happen at a checkup to help prepare your child for when they go for their next checkup. It's really beneficial, dramatic play. Um, the next idea that I had is that we can practice hand washing. And I know that that's not the most exciting activity, but you can practice how long we need to wash our hands, how we wash our hands thoroughly, that we wanna get the front and the back and under the nails. My kids are really bad at that one. Uh, so you wanna make sure you talk about going up the arm a little bit, getting all that clean. And it usually helps if we sing a song while we're doing it, because that helps us know how long we need to wash our hands. So if you wanna practice that with your child, you can also just have a bucket of sudsy water and they can practice hand washing in that. But you can also, if you have any baby dolls that are entirely hard, you can give the babies baths. Or even if you have ones that have fabric but you don't mind them getting wet and drying out, they can practice giving baths that way. Um, it's always a popular activity here at the library. Since it's in October, you never know if it's going to be a little too cold outside. So uh, if possible, it's a great activity to do outside if it's warm enough because it does get a little wet and splashy. All right, let's see. Idea number five is that you can make some soapy art. There are lots of fun ideas for making art with soap or even just using bubbles. Um, there's lots of ideas for like the, using the foam soaping containers. Once you're done with that, you can use that um, to make some art that way. You could, if you wanted, you could try making some art with bar soap. There's a lot of fun ideas. You can look online and try to figure out which one's going to work best for you and your child. But just a heads up that those exist and that might be a fun way to introduce how germs and soap work together too. Another thing I like to do with the hand washing station, uh, going back to that idea, is that if you put a little bit of, I hate to use this, and I really hate to make you use this at your house, so you don't have to if you don't want to, but you could put a tiny little bit of glitter on their hand, have them give you a high five or do something like that. We always like to talk about the transmission of germs during this week, and especially right now, it's a perfect time to talk about how germs work and how they go from one person to another. So glitter is a good exemplifier of that and they can see it and know what's happening, but have them like give you a high five, um, have them open a doorknob, something like that, and they can see how the glitter is getting everywhere. And then they can try to wash it off with just water and then they can try to wash it off with soap and see which one does a better job. Um, so. You can also do soap art with the glitter and see if the soap will disperse the glitter or not. I'm curious to see. All right, and I think we're almost done. I have two more ideas. Um, one of the fun things to do with painting is that we paint with a lot of weird stuff here at Worthington Park Library. So we will paint with things like Q-tips, or cotton swabs and during this week we get out a bunch of things that you might see in a doctor's kit like popsicle sticks oh I forgot to mention that for taking a temperature um, things like that that you can use in a couple ways we use the eyedroppers and pretend that we're going to use those for um, like giving shots the kids like to use those as shots um, so you can get out some of those items and a bigger piece of paper and some washable paints and let them just paint with all of those items because it, it's a very different experience from painting with a paintbrush. Um, let's see, I think I'm almost done. Last one is that you can read books about healthy options and healthy choices and you can talk through a plan with your child about how they are going to do their best to stay healthy. Um, I, my kid drew some fruits and vegetables that she wanted to try to eat and you know they can draw ways that they would like to exercise um, how much screen time they think they should get things like that and if you make that plan together they're more likely not entirely likely but they're more likely to go along with it and just to be more uh, cognizant and think about it a little bit more uh, of how healthy they can be and how healthy they can stay because if we get those patterns in place when they're kids it's so much easier isn't it all right that's all I had today I hope that you stay healthy 
Um, if you are wearing masks when you go out, now you have a prop at home to play doctor that you didn't have before. So that's nice, right? So um, I hope that you're staying safe and staying healthy. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye.